Hindi McMurtry. Um, I'm a senior, and my major is Anthropology and Spanish. Um, and I'm doing the White Willow Tree or Stalix Alba. Um, so the main constituent is salicin, and um, it was used to create aspirin. Synthetic salic salicylic acid was created in the lab, and by acetyl, sorry, acid, I can't say this word, acetylating it, you can create aspirin. Um, its main uses are um, as an analgesic and an anti-inflammatory. And Hippocrates, Dioscorides, and Pliny the Elder all reported its uses. And the ancient Egyptians also used it as well. Um, Native Americans have uh, used it for years as all kinds of different things, like um, cosmetic uses for your hair and your skin, as well as for fevers and pain. Um, and I also found studies that show its use as cancer prevention. Um, it grows six to 18 meters, and its flowers are yellow and green. Um, there's a picture of the seeds on the side right there. And its normal habitat is, um, it, it can grow in a variety of habitats, but usually it's near water because the seeds need water to, for dispersal. But once the seeds have been implanted in the ground, um, they don't need water uh, constantly in order to survive. It's just the dispersal part. And the seeds um, travel pretty far because they're really lightweight and they have like hairy things on them so that they can attach and move in, in uh, great distances. So it has a lot of traditional uses because it's been around for a really long time. Um, the ancient Egyptians used it for pain um, Hippocrates and Dioscorides um, recorded that uh, it was used as gout or a treatment for gout and rheumatic joint diseases. And Hippocrates uh, recorded that you could uh, chew the leaves during childbirth as a way to deal with the pain. Um, uh, Pliny the Elder used or recorded its use as an analgesic, and Native Americans as well reported it as an analgesic. And its typical traditional uses are for rheumatic pain, back pain, toothache, headaches, and fevers. Um, and then the ancient Greeks also recorded as a fever and um, as a treatment for malaria. Um, and then in England, it was used primarily because um, in, like, in their belief system, um, uh, diseases were found um, in certain places. And so in order to find the cure, you needed to look where the disease was. So usually near water, people would have fevers and chills, and so they started looking for treatments for fevers and chills, and they found um, the white willow tree because it lives mostly near water. Um, and then in 1757, Edward Stone went looking for um, a replacement for quinine, and he tried the white willow bark, and it was just as bitter as quinine, so he started trying to analyze it and see what was in it. Um, and found that it had a lot of anti-inflammatory effects. And then in 1829, um, Leroux, a French chemist, um, he identified salicin. And um, then the Cherokee Indians used it for a bunch of different things. One of them was they would use it as a respiratory aid um, for uh, during sports. Um, they also use the, an infusion with the inner bark to treat a lost voice, and they chewed the roots for hoarseness. Um, the Blackfoot Indians used it, um, they would create extracts to treat dandruff and to straighten the hair. Um, the Costa Noans would use it as a hair rinse and to treat balding, they would create a paste and rub it on the bald spots. Um, the Creek Indians used it for swelling and as a wash for the skin. The Isletas used it, um, as a skin bath. And I also found that it was used in teas in Bosnia and Herzegovina for renal ailments and as a tea for restlessness. Um, so its main constituents are glycosides, tannins, aromatic aldehydes and acids, salicyl alcohol and flavonoids. And the glycosides are mainly um, salicylates. And so synthetic salicylate was created, and then the acetylated version of it um, created aspirin, like I already said. 
Um, and then aspirin has anti-inflammatory, analgesic, and antipyretic effects. And the way aspirin works is um, it inhibits the COX enzyme, and this enzyme leads to the creation of prostaglandins, which um, cause inflammation, swelling, pain, and fever. So, and then here's a picture of how they isolated it and acetylated it to create aspirin. Um, so my in vitro studies are, um, they did a, um, a study using canine chondrocytes to study the anti-inflammatory effects of um, rosehip, willow bark, and the nettle leaf. And all three showed effective anti-inflammatory um, actions. And then I also found another study that where they tried to create a beverage, like an anti-inflammatory beverage. And so they used, um, they took herbs and uh, air dried them, freeze dried them, and then oven dried them to see which version created the best, or like kept the phenolics um, the most active. And the freeze dried and the oven dried had the highest effect of, their, of the phenolic constituents. Um, and then the anti-proliferative and pro-apoptotic effects um, a study was done to study the cells in the lining of the colon, and um, willow bark extract was tested on cancer cells in the colon, and the extract had um, pro-apoptotic effects on the cancer cells, which means that it killed the cancer cells. So that was exciting to find. Um, and then the in vivo, um, they tried to do this essentially the same experiment in rats, and so they gave rats um, or all the, half of the rats were given aspirin and then all of them were given um, uh, colon cancer injections. And the rats who were on aspirin had a lower number of tumors and they also had a smaller size tumors when they did have tumors, as opposed to the rats who were not on aspirin. Um, clinical studies, there's a lot of them. Um, one of the interesting ones was the headaches. So what they did is they had a study where people um, would have like a mask to cover their eyes and they would put a topical cream and one of the creams had salicin and the other one was a placebo. And um, more of the people who um, had the salicin cream showed that their pain was relieved. Um, as a blood thinner, um, most of us know that aspirin is a blood thinner and so I found a study that showed this and it increased the bleeding time, and this is because it inhib inhibits the release of the platelet ADP, which what is what causes the platelets to join together. Um, there was another study on the use of warts, and they used uh, conventional medicine with like 16% salicylic acid, and then they also used herbal medicines without acid and with acid, and the herbal medicines um, had olive oil in them, and um, it, the study actually showed that the herbal medicines were just as effective as conventional medicine, um, with or without acid. Um, and then back pain, uh, extract pills were taken to treat chronic or back pain, and the goal was at the end of the study for um, the patients who were taking the, I mean the, um, the extract were to go five days without having to take tramadol, which was like their backup painkiller. And 39% of the high dose group was able to go five days without taking it just from taking the willow bark extract pills. And then contraindications. Um, tannins, high levels of tannins cause gastrointestinal toxicity. Um, and then salicin is potentially toxic as well in high doses. And there's potential allergies to the willow bark. And um, there's uh, toxicity with aspirin because of the high levels of salicylates. And, um, And yeah, toxicity from salicylates causes gastric and renal irritation, nausea, vomiting, gastrointestinal bleeding. Um, current use, most of it is just the use of aspirin. Um, the acetyl salicin, salicylic acid was first synthesized in 1853, and then Bayer um, rediscovered it in Germany, and now Bayer aspirin is one of the biggest selling drugs in the world. 
Um, and today, aspirin is used to prevent myocardial infarction, strokes, colorectal cancer. And in Germany, they actually use willow bark extract as a substitute for aspirin. And um, so the white willow tree was one of, led to the first synthetic drugs, drug making. So creating salicin in the lab. Um, but after the creation of aspirin, there was a decline in research because aspirin was kind of like the miracle drug and cured so many things. Um, and so I think it would be interesting to look at like what herbal salicin still does because it, wouldn't, it doesn't have as many problems with it as the normal insects do, which is what aspirin is. And um, I think further research needs to be done on the cancer treatment because it showed apoptotic effects on cancer cells. Um, so I, I'm wondering what other cancers it could be effective on. And, um, and it would also be interesting to look at what the Native Americans use it for because they use it for things that are way different than just pain and inflammatory illnesses. So what other uses for salicin?